Hello! Welcome to DIY is my happy place. I'm Amy and today we're going to make 4th of July notes. We are now halfway through the year. I've been making gnomes since December. Every holiday, every kind of whim, and I make all different types of gnomes. Now, it's so much fun to take something that looks like this. Basically, a sock with some stuffing, some straws glued on, and turn it into a standing gnome. Yes, that's exactly what we're gonna do today. And it's going to be a 4th of July grill guy. Yes, I love it. So, if you want to see how to make a 4th of July gnome, let's get started. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know that I use these balloon sticks to create legs and to be able to attach the feet. Now I've got some links below that I that will show you how to make the shoes and how to do this. And I don't want to reiterate what we've already done. So I'm just showing you some of the shoes that I've done. And I love making shoes in advance. And then when I, I'm on a whim, I can just pick which ones I want to do. Now this was the inspiration for this gnome. I saw this tea towel in the Dollar Tree and I thought, okay, that's really cute. I want to make a gnome all around that tea towel. So the first thing I do is I get some curlers, glue some felt on the outside, and those are going to be my bendable arms. My favorite nose for a gnome is using the golf ball, plastic golf balls that you get from the Dollar Tree. And I take some pantyhose and just attach it on just with a pipe cleaner or you could use a zip tie. Either one works equally well. Cut the zip tie off and make sure that you leave some of the hose out to glue on. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, here are the basic things that I start all my gnomes with. I get a pair of athletic socks, either white or black, from the Dollar Tree. And this is the easiest part. You put those straws up in and glue them in with hot glue with some stuffing. Sometimes I add some duct tape around to make it look like they have a pair of hose on. And I usually do those in advance too. In this case, I'm not really going to need the duct tape on the legs because I'm going to put pants on them. Now, as you can see, you can attach the gnome legs right to the shoes and it will stand on its own. And it's just fantastic. You can make it look like it's taking a step forward, it's leaning on the back, just depending on how you attach those straws up into your gnome. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my shoes aside for now. And it's so much easier to work with the gnome if the feet aren't on it when you're creating. Now I'm gonna do a glove hat on this one. So you can use a sock. There's a lot of different things you can use. But I'm gonna use a the glove hat and of course this tea towel that I absolutely love and so I'm going to use part of the tea towel to make the pants and part of it to make a sign. So I'm going to cut the red part on the outer edges of the tea towel and I'm going to turn that into his trousers. And I just wanted to use every piece of fabric. I can actually make a couple of gnomes with one tea towel. And that's one thing about me, I do not like to waste anything. So the sign, we'll put that aside and we'll work on that in a minute. I'm gonna cut the white outer part off and I'll use a little trim of the very bottom of that white part where it is very well stitched and I will cut that to make the belt. So that will be later, but right now I'm just gonna get all the red uh, separated from the white and that will become my pant legs. Now I'm gonna glue this on and I want it to have the seam coming right up the front and right up the back so it looks like it's got a zipper, you know, like a real pant would be. So I'm gonna glue this around the waist area, what will be the waist area. And then once I get that glued on really good, I'm gonna go ahead and set it aside and let it really cool down before I start gluing the legs around. Otherwise it tries to pop off. So we're just gonna put, make sure the seams are coming straight up the front, straight down the back. We'll add enough glue to get that right into place. And then we'll set that aside. 
and I definitely like using these makeup spatulas for flattening out the glue to make sure there's no little bumps and it works to keep from getting hot glue on your fingers too. Okay, I'm gonna trim off the very bottom now that I know exactly the length that I'm gonna need and I'll use the white gingham part for pockets. So we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, now let's get the, the hat ready. I cut the fingertips off because I'm gonna use those for mittens. And don't cut the thumb because it needs to be, all of them need to be bound together and you need the length of the thumb in order to bind it. So we're just gonna use our pipe cleaner again to bind up the top of the hat. And you generally wanna use a pipe cleaner that's the same color as your glove, or you can use a color that's the same as embellishments that you're using. In this case, I didn't actually have a blue pipe cleaner. I only had a purple one, so I'm just gonna use silver here. Now, I have a tutorial of how to make these pom-poms, how to make your own pom-poms. Definitely worth making your own pom-pom. Then you can have any color you want and any size you want. So we're gonna trim that off into a flat area so that I can add a lot of glue, and then I'll just push my pom-pom right onto the top of my glove. And again, using my makeup spatula to flatten it all around. And then I'll set that aside and let that completely dry. Once that's completely dry, it just really stays on well. Okay, now let's glue down the sides of the legs. As you will see with this particular gnome, I did a lot of things in advance. I did the shoes in advance and I, you know, a few things in advance. So this really is gonna come together fast. Now all I do is add some glue to the inseam of the pant and you can see how we are making the little trouser. Now you do want to use something else to hold it together up at the very top and I actually use a pair of pliers so that I don't so I can just get very precise there and not get any glue on me. Okay so he is coming together my little 4th of July grill guy. Okay now I want you to be able to see what it looks like and, and anywhere where there's any openings or holes just keep on gluing until everything's sealed up and now it's starting to look like a pair of pants. I love using these straws because you can make the legs as long or as short as you want and actually you could make this bigger around if you wanted the legs to look wider. Now I'm going to use some of this gingham to put some pockets on the back and I was thinking I could have used uh, some molding clay and created a little comb to go in the pocket. That would be cute. The one thing that I've noticed with gnomes is the really tiny little details are what really make it stand out and cute. Just every little part. So I love having the pockets on the back and creating something interesting even on the back side of my gnomes because sometimes there is a way to be able to look you depending on how you stage them they might be able to be seen on all sides Wait, I, one thing that i would love to know is where all you viewers are from if you'll comment below and give tell me where you're watching this video from i love to see where all the youtube viewership comes from <laughs> All right, now, I always add extra felt on the top of my curlers, depending on how tall my gnome body is, so that I have plenty of space to glue the very top of the arms on the top of the head. Now, I, I'm very generous with my glue here. I don't want the arms to fall off, and because they're bendable, I want to be able to really manipulate them around without them having any trouble with the head. So just be generous with your hot glue. Now we're gonna let that cool and I'll add some hot glue for my gnome nose. Okay, now for my beard, I'm gonna use a mop from the Dollar Tree and I'll cut off some pieces of it. And I got some red acrylic paint and I'm gonna add that into some water. I don't want it really, really bright, but I wanna be able to dip my mop into the water and paint to create a red beard and you could do any color you wanted depending on the style of your gnome or you could make little braids if you want it to be a girl so i love to color the hair using white ones are fun but color is fun too now i have a bunch of these books left over from a previous projects so i'm actually using them for my signs and i have a detailed 
YouTube video of showing how to make those signs out of those. And then this is what it looks like when I add the hair. And then I add a few paper towels in the top of the hat in order to form the top of the head. And then make sure you glue that hat down to your gnome really well. And here's what my A-frame sign looks like. I just glued the tea towel right onto the black felt in the sign. And then here's my barbecue grill, which I've done a detailed video of how I did that. And here's my shoes, again, detailed video of how to do those. And th that's all there is to it. There is my barbecue gnome. You can see that I added the belt and just a few little gems to make it look like it has a buckle. And I added those fingertips to the ends of the arms to look like he's wearing mittens. And the thing I love about this gnome is you can bend the arms around and give him a bit of a personality. He can say hi, he can put his hands on his hips, he can be walking, he can do anything. There are so many different things that you can do when you have bendable gnome arms. And that's all there is to it. Can't believe that we made it through the 4th of July guy. Now, if you want to see more videos like this, click on this one right here or this one right here. And please subscribe, like, and share, and I'll see you on the other side.